Now let's talk about Magic Adventures of Mumphy. Magic Adventures of Mumphy. Mumphy. Yes, that's that's how you pronounce it right. So Magic Adventures of Mumphy, a a mid nineties two D drawn animated TV show created by Brie Alcroft, who was the original person behind Thomas Tension Friends back in nineteen eighty four. Here we get this interesting revival. Of an old TV show which was originally from 1975, which was based on books, I think, I forgot where, uh, 60s, 50s, 60s around the time. And here we have like this other second t- television revival that Brick of uh, was doing. The interesting thing about this one is, and this is quite going to shock people actually, because this sort of breaks tradition, no, it's the second sort of break tradition really too with British TV shows, even though the first being Pingu, which was Swiss, like it was a Swiss animated TV show. That was hugely big in Britain. This one's American, actually. Uh, sort of American. Even though you got Brit Brick- Alcroft, who is British, sort of doing it. It's mainly like a sort of American production. Um, obviously, what they do with this rev- uh, revised or at sort of like a second revival of Mumphy after the sort of like the unknown 70s TV show is it's 2D animation. It's, it's also like a Broadway musical. It's like filled with songs and stuff really and you have American voice actors and you have like this weird whimsical adventure tale really that spans from over 13 episodes really and and there's a and there's been a, you know, a few multiple series in it and it's rumoured to be still keep going like there's meant to be another season coming out in the States really which is pretty okay so so the story, so the, the 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 plot and the story of of the magic magic adventures of Mumphy is, is that to do like this this called this elephant, which is Mumphy, like a she, he's well he's basically a toy actually, uh, some re- I don't know why really. It's why he said it claims that he's a toy, but I don't. Well, he basically lives in this, like magical world. He lives in like some like strange uh, like some odd um, what do you call like a Tudor. Sort of Apache house or something like that, really in the middle in the middle of the woods, and he basically comes across the scarecrow, and they become friends, and they go on this weird adventure to find this. Oh, well, don't really, it's just filled with wonders and weirdness, really, and they have they find they find another another per, a character who they befriend, with, which is called Pinky. It's a little pig that has wings, which is quite obscure. And the Discord adventures mean new new people face against some deadly enemies very much. And it spans on the course of 13 episodes. Uh, similar sto- There was a few similar uh, seasons, very m- stories like that, with like the Dreamstone very much. That's sort of like a similar idea, found at the Dreamstone. Go on adventures to Dark Plans, Dark Forces. There was another one that actually came out in the early 90s, which was something called Truckers, which is based on the Terry Pratchett books. That spanned over 13 episodes, I did, like over one story, with one story, 13 episodes spanned over. Same with Mumphy. This, well, the first season actually from 94 spanned over 13 episodes very much, and afterwards they just did standalone stories, really. Um. The animation style is really good. I do have to admit, it's very fluid and lovely. Actually, it's very considering it's from American. Actually, they do a really good do- uh, good job. Um, the voice actor and narrator Patrick Br- Patrick Breen, who uh, recently I found out he was a part of the one of Brit Alcock's movies. Well, the the only Brit Alcock movie very much I came on cinemas and stuff. You know why it is. I'm not going to say its name because I'm going to keep that for. A, Another video, another time. Oh, God. Oh. But it was originally part of it, then he got then he got taken out. I think after after the test horses looked in fort. Mm. No, the American test horses just chopped, said, and ended up being butchered and everything like that. However, Patrick Breen's narration is pretty good, actually. I mean, it's not really bad. It's okay. I mean, continuous American and stuff like that, you know, it's sort of... It's a different taste, if you know what I mean. It's like you're entering different waters here. But it's overall pretty okay. Excuse that microwave. I do apologise. So, how do I know about Magic and Adventures of Mumphy? There's two. There's two different points in my life that I found out about this. The first point is, years ago, 
I think this is the early 2000s I got this. I got a DVD, which is the Thomas and Friends Chocolates of Fun DVD. And in the sleeve, there is a promo, uh, there's a promo for something called Gully Entertainment. Uh, Gully Entertainment was a big old company at the time. And in it, on it, it, has like, it says like something like interesting entertainment or something like that. And it has a little collage of five characters being Captain Pugwash, James the Cat, Sooty, Thomas Tash and Friends, and M- Mumphy. And I was intrigued by it because I know well I knew Tom Stanton and, uh, and Sooty that okay, but I didn't know they were three characters. I didn't know James the Cat. I didn't know Captain Pugwash at all. I didn't, especially didn't even know Mumphy either. I was interested really what they were actually. I found it recently and found them and found them pretty interesting. Uh, Mumphy, the the second well the second thing I found out was I in, I was in Morecambe once and I was usually get away dog. Usually, we were in. We used to we used to go like to the main sort of centre of Morecambe, really. But on this occasion, because we went down to the far down by the other side of Morecambe that we never really went to, really. I mean, down there you have that laser attack thing down there. You have various pubs, and there was this big um, market or something like that, like that, like a big thing, and we went in, and. I don't know, we went in like a back entrance actually, I think. There's two entrances, like there's a main entrance in the front and there's a back entrance. I think we went for the back entrance. And that leads that leaded to a uh basically like DVD book a books thing, and there was VHS as well on the on the shelf. And on the shelf was the original uh the first month of video like was released, released in the UK, which is the beginning of things and other stories. I was interested to see what is what was that, because it's a picture of Mumphy Bend in town on the ground or something, looking for something. Would you get down, dog? Oh. Stop it. Dog stretching out, trying to jump on me. Yeah, so I had a look. I, I was so intrigued what it was, and it was released by Video Collection, which I was very intrigued by. If you haven't noticed from the, the very first, well, the first 42, the uh, videos I do in Puffs Nature, you know it opens with a video collection logo. Arguably one of the best VHS idents out of Britain. Really. And I was intrigued by it. And I looked up later that there was two VHS releases only released in the UK. Apparently there was meant to be a third release, but that never got um, released, actually. Um, because I think it I think at the end of the second VHS, it was meant it was teased that uh, Volume Three was or Part Three was meant to be coming out. However, it didn't. And so these, considering these are the only two VHSs released in '94, like mid late '94, I'm starting to wonder what was the re- what, why we never got the complete season, like the overarching season on VHS. So. I could probably understand it was to do with Video Collection International. I can probably think all oh, it wasn't. It wasn't where I was. It might have not been well received on C on ITV very really much. Or who know? Who knows really? There's not much. There's not much evidence to to why it never got. You know, like maybe we got reception or a or a boost in video on um, video releases really. From for what I understand is. Only the first season, the the overarching season, was was premiered on ITV ninety four, and I think afterwards ITV saw sort of maybe agreed maybe this will work or something like that, or or maybe just maybe the American point of thing really like they ha- they had to sign agreement they had to do like a partnership agreement with people in the in the states really, I don't think it didn't go down too well who knows. Who knows? And only the first season ever aired. Afterwards, you know, Magic Convention Monthly was more bigger in the US than the UK. Pretty much. I don't know really. It's, it's there was there's no there's no evidence of why it got, you know, you know sort of got disbanded really, or disappeared after the U, from the UK really. It's a mystery. That's all I can really think of really. Anyway, I've been talking about the Magic Convention of Mumphy, sort of like an unknown sort of American type show that only aired one season here in the UK. Two VHSs are still around. There was meant to be a third one back in ninety four, early ninety five, but there wasn't anything come from there. It just it just never came. 
probably do it with companies, maybe the United States television rights and stuff like that, that didn't get on well with the British, who knows. It's very baffling, it's very, we're very unsure, it's very, it's very blank, really, like there's no, there's just, just no evidence at all what really happened, and why it never became a bit successful in the UK. It's just really, just really baffles me. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you for the next video.